Hi BC, how you doing? Beautiful spring day here. Um, I'm going to do another review of one of the albums in this book, The Acid Archives. So this is my second Acid Archive diary. Um, hope you checked out my other one and all the other people who've jumped on board now and doing these. Um, some really great albums being shown. Uh, today I've got an album by a band out of um, Las Vegas. Their one and only album came out in 1969. Their self-titled album, Lodestone. Um, I can't remember what made me buy this. I think I might have bundled it in with something else I bought online quite some time ago. Um, it being cheap was the draw, I guess, and the fact that it was from 1969, I thought, well, it's going to have period flavour if nothing else. It's released on an independent label called Barnaby Records. Um, I have no idea how many of these were pressed, how many got out there. But um, I imagine mine is one of the ones with the worst sleeve wear, you'll see. But the record plays fine, that's what counts. Um, so what's it like? It's generally kind of typical horn rock, I suppose. Um, and I guess a lot of people have an issue with horn rock. As soon as there's any horns in a track by any band, people are horrified, it seems. Um, I think the main problem with the genre is how, um, how formulaic it is. Um, you get your, your gruff vocals. Um, you get horns where there should be guitars. Um, it can be pretty earnest and full of itself. And the obvious comparisons are always blood, sweat and tears in Chicago, I guess. And yeah, this falls into a lot of the traps that most horn rock does. Um, it has great fuzz guitar on here. Uh, some nice Hammond organ and piano in places. Busy bass and drums, you know, musicianship is, is great. And yet has those gruff, soulful vocals. And I often wonder if um, these bands would have been more popular nowadays if they didn't follow the same formula. Why have the same gruff, soulful vocal? It's, it gets a bit much, to be honest. Um, of course, this would be a better album if it had heavy guitars where the horn riffs are. Uh, I've got no problem with horn rock. Good horn rock, I think, is great. But... It's lack of imagination in some, some albums that kill them for me. And this gets close to being in that category. Um, I think the first couple of tracks on here, See the Light and Keep On Burning. They're decent, if I remember right, up pace tunes. Nothing that's going to set the world on fire. But like I say, well played. Um, decent entries into the horn rock catalog but the thing that really elevates this album makes it worth worth buying is the second track on side two flower pop which don't know if you can see that's 15 minutes long um and that's unlike anything else on the album it's it's groovy it's jazzy psychedelia with a really nice dreamy vocal the gruffness goes for most of this track and it's so much the better for it the horns on there are lending atmosphere and texture rather than dictating the whole sound, um, which is part of the problem with horn rock. It's just such a fixed template. It gets really wearing at times. Um, and there's flute on there as well. Uh, the bass is funky and exhilarating. It's, as you'd expect from a 15 minute track, it has multi parts. Um, one part is kind of this moody, black exploitation psych kind of thing um, again with loads of fuzz guitar has famous psychedelic vocals and a really haunting sax and the sax used as a sort of textural um, element rather than as providing these wearisome riffs works really really well um, I think that sort of black exploitation section is followed by a kind of atmospheric drifting part that leads into this sort of funky Hammond and fuzz guitar drum groove which is really really good fantastic fuzz solo on that and a bit of a saxophone and trumpet freak out but 
Again, it's a freak out. It's not structured. It just feels free and energetic and everything the rest of the album isn't. Um, and the whole thing's underpinned by a real snaking bass workout as well. Uh, when the vocals briefly return on Flower Pop, they are of that gruff variety that kind of hinders the rest of the album, but they're softened by some kind of sweet backing vocals, which makes them a lot more palatable. And then for the finale of the song, those sort of dreamy vocals return, and it's just 15 minutes of jazzy, blissed out, psychedelic, grooving joyfulness. It's, it's a fantastic track, it really is. If you can find it online, I think I think you can stream this album on Spotify, actually. Just check out the track Flower Part. I'd skip the rest, to be honest, if you want Rock's Not Your Thing. But if you like the sound of it, psychedelic, funky, jazzy, psych. Psychedelic, psych, you know what I mean. That is the track to check out. And to be honest, if the whole album was of the quality of that one track, people would be really taking notice of this. As it is, it's easy to skip over. But... 15 minutes worth of music on one album isn't, isn't a bad return for your money, to be honest. So there you go, that's Lodestone. I'll show you the, um, I'll show you the label, as this is a private press rather than a, a major label release. So there you go, my copy I think is in kind of VG condition. It's a fair few surface marks and scratches on it, but it plays pretty well on the whole. So I have no complaints with that. And as usual, we'll have a look and see what um, the Acid Archives has to say about this. All right, Lodestone uh, from Las Vegas, Nevada. Came out in 1969 on Barnaby Records. Um, had a 2004 re-release. Don't know whether that was on CD or vinyl. Um, it says here, seldom seen album on Andy Williams' label. Okay. So normally an easy listening label by the sounds of it. Uh, featuring Bobby Darren's backing group in a brief bid for success on their own. So definitely don't come from a psychedelic background, but um, I guess that's pretty common in the 60s for um, jobbing musicians to play in bands they didn't necessarily love just to pay the bills and did their kind of psychedelic or horn rock or proto prog or whatever on the side. Um, the album's reputation rests mainly on the near sidelong flower pot, an ambitious keyboard based composition that may recall the aggregation or freeborn. It goes through many changes and makes good use of vocal effects, fuzz leads, jazzy horn interplay and tight harmonies. Had the whole album been like this, it would have been quite interesting. However, the rest is all blood, sweat and tears style big band rock with a brass section and soulful vocals that seem one note after a while. The electric sitar is a nice touch. Forgot to mention that. Um, certainly two or three of the tracks do have the electric sitar on that. It does raise them above the normal level of horn rock. Um, but the horns and the vocals dominate the sound. The playing is quite good, as often with this type of band, but overall I find this album too derivative and mainstream adjusted. Can't really argue with that. Um, Flower Pop, that's the track to listen to. So uh, check it out. I'll be back with another video soon. Perhaps um, not another Acid Archives one, maybe another one. Until then, take care. See you soon.